Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Father, we thank you for this evening. We exalt your name. We bless you. We thank you for the privilege of waiting upon you, the privilege of fellowshipping with you, the privilege, O oh Lord, of allowing us to gather in your presence. And we are praying that this evening, Lord, as we gather, you shall show yourself mighty. The Father, you shall minister life unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, release your presence. Send forth your word. And let our lives now remain the same. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us this evening, um, even as we start the service, we pray from Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The men ought always to pray and not to faint. <coughs> I want us to ask God the Father, this period as we wait upon you, release the spirit and the grace of prayer that we may pray, that we may wait upon you and not faint and not grow weary. In the name of Jesus, the men will pray. The men shall call upon your name. The Father, we shall pray. And the more we pray, the more we shall want to pray. Without fainting, without getting weary, without growing weak. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we wait upon you, let the grace of prayer, let the spirit of prayer, let the grace of supplication, let the spirit and the hunger to pray, Father, be multiplied in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the Father, we shall pray and not be weary. The Father, we shall pray and not be weak. Uh, the Father, we shall pray pray and not be and not faint in the mighty name of jesus uh, that the more we pray the more we shall want to pray in the mighty name of jesus uh, that the more we pray the more we shall hunger to pray that the more we pray the more prayer father shall be sweeter in our lives in the mighty name of jesus uh, father pour out the spirit uh, the spirit of prayer the grace to pray the spirit of supplication in the mighty name of jesus uh, father that it shall be easy for us to pray in the mighty name of jesus uh, the prayer shall become a delight in our lives in the name of jesus uh, father we give you praise we exalt you bible says that them that wait upon you they shall mount up with wings like eagles uh, lord that they shall run and not be weary lord that they shall walk and they shall not faint we pray that in the name of jesus uh, we shall rise up in the place of prayer we shall mount up in the place of prayer father release the grace father release the grace lord release the grace in the mighty name of jesus holy spirit anoint our prayers in the mighty name of jesus anoint our hearts to pray anoint our lips to pray anoint our spirits to pray in the mighty in the name of Jesus, uh, we refuse to faint in the place of prayer. We refuse to be dry in the place of prayer. We refuse to be weak in the place of prayer. We refuse to be weaklings in the place of prayer. We refuse to be defeated in the place of prayer. Holy Spirit. 
spirit anoint us to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, let the precious oil of God, uh, oh Father, anoint our prayers. La posha lenda la basaka in pazua la katande letiando locotia in a masando kulilanda zabaradai in the mighty name of jesus uh, we decree open heavens uh, as your children wait upon you we command open heavens uh, we destroy demonic hindrances uh, we destroy demonic blankets uh, we destroy demonic clouds uh, we destroy demonic canopies uh, lord i hinder prayer we destroy dryness uh, we destroy the power of sin we destroy the power of guilt we destroy weariness we destroy weakness in the mighty name of jesus let there be power to pray in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus and father let our prayers lord obtain results let our prayers yield results let our prayers yield results let all god be a let there be a breakthrough in the place of prayer in the mighty name of jesus randa le pasako to lombre shadai izanta pakatande le kwanda masetebe imaliando zoklali masaka talabashaka in the mighty name of jesus father we give you praise we exalt you izabaraba shande balagadiso Palagadi Zaradande Isa Kotolonia Mande Barada Salaba in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we exalt you. We give you praise. Father, we exalt you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise. We lift your name on high. We thank you for your presence that is in our midst right now. We thank you for what you are said to do in this service, my everlasting Father. We give you all the praise and we ask that you receive our praises this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee, O Fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Among, among the gods, who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Hallelujah. 
give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Oh, 
your name. Thank you for this evening. Father, we yield our lives to you, that our lives may give you glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen, amen, amen. Let's kindly have our seats in God's presence. Um, we're going to go through the Bible reading for this evening, Micah chapter 5, Micah chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops, he has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Verse 2, let's read it together. Yet to thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Verse 3, the Bible says, Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth has brought forth then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of israel verse 4 and to the ends of the earth verse 5 the bible says and this man shall be shall be the peace when the assyrian shall come into our land and when he shall tread in our palaces then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men verse 6 within our borders verse 7 and the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. Verse 8. can deliver verse 9 thy hand shall be lifted up upon thy adversaries and all thy enemies shall be cut off verse 10 thy chariot verse 11 and I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds verse 12 It says, verse 13, Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy sta standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands. Verse 14, and then verse 15, the last verse of that uh, chapter, and I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not had hallelujah we give god 
praise. Um, just a reminder, we continue to meet every evening from 6.30 p.m. for prayers and then breaking of our fast. May God strengthen us. For those of us who have not yet joined, maybe you are watching online, uh, I encourage you to join the prayers and fasting, the 40 days of prayer and fasting, which started from January 2nd to February 9th. And the Lord shall strengthen you to pull through and wait upon him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So at this point, uh, let's receive our Father in the faith this evening. Hallelujah. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension. You are like nothing ever seen on. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the death of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Your majesty is enthroned above. You are beautiful. Beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension. You are like nothing ever seen on. Who can grasp? Your infinite wisdom, Lord, who can fathom the death of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Your majesty is enthroned above. Look at me, come on. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, all praise is due. I stand in awe. I stand, I stand in all of you. That's where I am. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in all. Stand, we stand in all. Oh Lord, we stand, we stand, we stand in all of you. Holy God, holy God, to our praise is due. We stand in all. you are glorious and worthy to be praised. 
Christ, you are the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you, unto you, we lift our voice in praise, you are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious, for you are God. Oh yes, and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you, oh Lord, we worship you. We lift our voice in praise. Ah. You are the Lamb of God. If all you are glorious, for you are glorious and worthy to. You are the Lamb, you are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you. God, we lift our voice in praise. Ah, you are the Lamb upon King of glory is your name. Upon Lion of the tribe of Judah is your name. You are the Lamb upon. Rose of Sharon is your name. Lion of Tribe of Judah is your name. King of kings and the Lord of lords, you are the Lamb. Hey, you are the Lamb upon the throne. Oh, Lord, we worship you. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. We bow before you, we reverence you, Lord. We adore you, Lord, we give you the praise. You are the lamp upon the truth. upon the throne You are the lamp upon the throne of oh my God We worship you and adore you Lord yeah, We give you praise We reverence you Lord Upon the truth. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Receive our worship. Take over right now. Speak to us. Minister life to us. Then none of us remain the way we came to the service. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Today is day number 11. Uh, fasting and prayer. We thank God for keeping us. We have how many more days to go? 40 minutes left, 29 days. So it's far reduced. It will soon be true by the grace of God. The Bible said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Because why did the 
scripture used an eagle for an example in that place is because eagle also fast when an eagle grows to a certain level the eagle stops eating and goes to the top of a mountain and stays there for 40 days the eagle removes all its feathers it breaks its beak so it cannot eat so it just stays in seclusion until 40 days are over then new feathers start growing new wings a new beak it takes about 40 days or more for the new beak to grow for it to eat then when that eagle comes out of that seclusion of the mountain it becomes very strong stronger than it was before <laughs> the strength of the eagle is really that's why eagles live very long whenever they notice that they are weak and they are not strong anymore they stop they take off go for 40 days break their beak remove it so they can't eat remove all their feathers they look like chicken that they remove the feather they just remain on that in one mountain that's where they stay 40 days no food because there's no mouth to eat they remove the beak that they used to eat they broke they hit it on the mountain and it breaks off so they remain there a new one grows new feathers grow then they start flying again then when they take off they become stronger than they were before that's what the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord because eagles always wait <laughs> shall renew their strength like the eagle renews its strength they will mount up with wings you see that eagle when it comes out with fresh wings it's mounting up like this ah, ah. this eagle is very strong it just renewed it that's the way God wants us to be doing God wants our strength renewed. And the best way to renew your strength is through fasting and prayer. When you wait upon the Lord, when you fast. Enjoy fasting. It helps you to be a stronger Christian. It helps you to even be a healthier person physically. Because while you are fasting, all the toxins in your body are getting out. Your body is being cleansed. Then you become healthy again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And do you know eagle does it for 40 days? That's why eagle is the strongest bird on earth. It does it for 40 days. Alright, let's get to the scriptures today. Genesis chapter number 12, verse number 8 to verse number 20. is where we shall be considering today and then we'll be praying from there. The Bible says, And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east and there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord the Bible says in verse 9 and Abraham journeyed going on still towards the south and there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down unto Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Verse 12. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will see thee alive. Say, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, and it shall be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass, that when Abraham was come into Egypt, that the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. And the princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. He had sheep and oxen, and he has his men servant and maid servant, and she has his and camel. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why did thou tell me that she was? That why didn't, did thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why, has, why sayest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife and take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Blessed be the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word in Jesus' name. The study of today is 
from the story of Abraham. If you check where we stopped yesterday, the Bible says Abraham built an altar and settled between Ai and Bethel in the middle and began to live his life. The Bible says suddenly when he left that altar, go to that verse, number 8. One day, Abraham decided to move away from that altar. You see it in verse 9. And Abraham journeyed, going on still towards the south. He left the altar and moved down to the south and farming caught up with him. From there, you learn a major lesson. Don't go away far from the altar. Whenever you build an altar to God, stay around that altar. Don't be far from the altar you have built to God. If you go down southward, if you go down, you will meet famine in your life. What is famine? Famine is when there is scarcity of food, scarcity of water, scarcity of good things around you. Abraham built an altar, settled there, it was fine. Suddenly, Cheddar, let me travel a bit more. Let me go away from this altar. Let us check the other area. Let us even go down a bit. Ah, in fact, uh, since we have conquered here, let us, as he moved, famine started. Don't be far from the altar. You know, I gave a commandment to every member of this church and I said, put your house around this area so that it's easy for you to go to church. This is what I'm telling you. Because very soon, farmer will catch you wherever you are. I'm not saying, uh, uh, so you, of course, you, so you don't think I'm a prophet of them. I'm telling you the truth. Because I've told you earlier, those who have moved, go and check them. Those who have already moved towards this area, check their life. Farmer is coming. Because when you move far from the altar, it's difficult for you to access the altar easily. Farmer will catch up with you, sir. Something will happen that will take you away and make it difficult. Farmer is when there's difficulty in having access to what God has made free. That is farmer. Don't move your life far from the altar. Don't move your life far from the altar. Abraham already built an altar. He has settled in the middle. He was in charge. God had told him, this land I am giving to you and your children like he told us before we left Ngara that he's giving us this land and the lands around the area. He has already told us before we left Ngara. He already told us. He told Abraham that this land I am giving you and your children forever. And Abraham was very happy. He built an altar there. I don't know what moved Abraham away from the place and moved him down. And he met with Father. I don't know. I made up my mind, I'm not running anywhere. God has already given me a place. A placement. So where am I running to? To where? There was famine in the land where he went to. When it was where the altar was, there was no famine there. But when he went down, there was famine in the land. When famine caught him in the land of the south where he went to, God says, and he went further down again to Egypt. <clears throat> One of the bad things about going down is when you go down, you keep going down. <laughs> there is oh God, put that scripture there, sir. Don't be angry with the scripture. Put it, leave it there. We are in church. Uh, there's nothing else to post there if not scripture. Uh, leave it there. Now, there is no other place to go to when you start going down than to keep going down. See, he went down to sojourn in the south. When he was sojourning the farmer he kept he went down now. Uh, this one is down now to Egypt. <laughs> he, he found the square root down now, sir. I'm telling you. He went down to Egypt. He, he rearranged himself to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was, it became very grievous. When you are away from the altar, there's a grievous famine coming. Grievous famine hits you when you are far away from the altar. Please, everyone who have had me preach, that have had me give the instruction before, obey the instruction. Move towards the altar before famine catch up with you. Relocate around the altar here. Relocate it. The church cannot leave you again. Forget it. It can never happen. The church will start flourishing from here. So it's better for you to be around where the altar is. So you're not far from the altar. Except you are rebellious. And then we'll check whether farmer will not catch up with rebellious people. Now, it's also an instruction to everybody watching online, those who are in different countries hearing the word of God right now. Don't go far from the altar. When you go far from the altar, farmer will catch up with you. And when farmer catch up with you, you will go more down to Egypt. And by the time you are going to Egypt, the famine becomes more grievous. See, it may not be famine of food. It may be famine of money. 
It will be famine of favor. You will never have favor. Everywhere you enter, you'll be looking for favor. Favor will run away from you. It will be famine of good health. You'll be looking for health. Hey, you will have money or you will have favor, but you will not have good health. You will not be running. They will take you to cut you open and remove your heart and put a goat's heart so that you can manage a goat's heart or a chicken's heart. <laughs> famine comes in different shapes and sizes. Please, don't be far from the altar. Being far from the altar is detrimental to your life and your destiny and your stay on earth. Be very neat, close to the altar. Connect yourself and stick there. I have told you. I have. <laughs> far mind is coming. The Bible says in the next verse, verse number 11, verse number 11, the Bible says in verse number 11, 11, 11, 11, and it came to pass when he was come near to enter Egypt that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman. See, Pharaoh, uh, she had married, they had married Sarah for a long time. It is when you get near Egypt that you realize that your wife is finer than you. <laughs> Inferiority complex attacks those who go near to Egypt. Whenever you start approaching Egypt, that is when you start having low self-esteem and inferiority complex. That is when you start looking down on yourself. Excuse me, madam. Was Sarah not fine before? How come it is near Egypt? Abraham, remember? Uh, Nyaga. Was Sarah becoming beautiful that day? Uh, mama, or people get beautiful suddenly? Uh, no, maybe in Nigeria, people get beautiful very urgently. <laughs> it are there. How come this man never saw that his wife was fine until they approached Egypt? Whenever you get to Egypt, inferiority complex will baptize you. Low self-esteem comes upon you. Egypt is not a good place. Egypt makes you forget that God has blessed you before. Egypt makes you forget your testimonies. Egypt turns you to a liar. Abraham began to fabricate lies. He now told her, he said, come, 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 come. Tell them you're my sister. Are you my sister? No, you are not. No, you are Mwen. <laughs> are you understanding what I'm talking about? He said, go and tell them that you're my sister. Now, why? He says, because you are fair to look upon. It's why I've been fair to look upon before they married the man. If not for the fairness, Abraham will not have married this woman. Abraham remembered at the gate of Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Egypt is the place of sin. What is sin in Kiswahili? That when you get close to Dambi, inferiority complex will come. What is inferiority complex? When you look down on yourself. Kujitunisha. You will kujitunisha your life. You just look at such a uh, he's richer than me. You're not shake it and shake it. You're richer than me. You're not that. What you're not shaking for me. You will forget all that God has done for you. Forget your testimonies. Whenever you are close to Egypt. The Bible says in verse number 12, verse number 12. Verse number 12, verse number 12, verse number 12, verse number 12. One, two, one, two. He says, Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife. And they will kill me and they will save their life. What is happening to Abraham? Why would Abraham stay around the altar? He ran to this place and is now having complex insecurity. He was now insecure. Say, hey, they will kill me because of you. So, so that they will not kill me. Okay, wait. Who is fine? Who is beautiful? Is it not Sarah? Who should be afraid? Is it not the beautiful one? Muse, I imagine I am fine. You, you are not fine. When they are looking for who to arrest, who do they arrest? The fine person, am I correct? <laughs> the ugly person <laughs> afraid that they will kill him because of the fine person. You see, me, when you are in Egypt, confusion of mind comes on you. There is a spirit in Egypt that makes you confused. Can you imagine how confused Abraham was? Now, who are they supposed to kill? Is it not the fine person? He said they will save the fine person alive and kill the ugly person. <laughs> Normally, it is the fine person people that arrest. For example, if you if you come, robbers come, is it not the person who has money that they will do for? Imagine a robber comes and I will shoot you. Your life or your money is in fact my life. <laughs> I don't have money. So the, the robber will leave you alone. Because you don't, you don't even have anything. See, call that my shoe. And then you give him one shoe that I have holes. <laughs> he won't be interested in you. Abraham became so afraid. Why? Because of the spirit in Egypt. The spirit in Egypt made him have inferiority complex. 
made him not to value himself anymore. The next verse. The Bible says in verse number 13. Verse number 13. So I pray thee. That I pray, say I pray thee. Thou art my sister. That it may be well with me for your sake. And my soul shall live because of you. Can you imagine? He told her to tell a lie. He taught her how to tell a lie. And the woman had to obey. To tell a lie. The Bible says in verse number 14. But and it came to pass that when Abraham was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. See, what you fear always befalls you. Whatever you fear always happens to you. If you fear, you will die. You will die, sir. If you fear, you will be sick. You will be sick. Anything you are afraid of always happens to you. When we are building this house, when we are on this floor, this floor that we are in now, on now, um, the carpenter did the work and did a very bad work. And we poured the concrete and the concrete fell. The foreman was afraid. Everybody was afraid. I told them, me, I am not afraid. We are going to build this building to the top. In fact, I will ridicule the devil. I remember some people who come and we look at him. And they, and they were asking the fundis, what is going on? The fundis said, eh, there's a mistake. So people were afraid. So I said, no devil will make me afraid. One man came to threaten us. I told the man, if I see anybody here, including yourself, I will treat you to all of you like the devil. And I made a decree over the place. And I stood by the decree with fasting. And I said, I will ridicule the devil severally. And then we started building. We repaired the place. All this place. We repaired it. I think it was here. This segment was where it fell. So they removed it completely. Cut it down. Brought it down completely. We spent another $1,000 to rearrange this place. From this place. This place. Was to be fixed. Because this was off here. This place fell. This place was this place. Is that what it after it was fixed, we did this one. After it was fixed, we did the other one. Then the neighbors are there coming. Ah, uh, God is helping you guys. Ah, we thank God. All those who expected evil to happen to us began to come. We moved to the next one. We moved to the next one. We moved to this side. See, what I'm trying to do is prove the devil wrong. Sir. Because if I was afraid, they would start falling. Whenever you fear anything, whatever you fear, you attract. You attract your fear. If you fear that your wife will die, she will die. You are tried at death. You fear that your husband will have an accident, he will have it. Fear is a magnet. It pulls what you fear to you. That is why you see me. I'm not afraid of anything. Because I've learned the secret of fear. Is just have it. It is a magnet. It magnetizes whatever you fear about. You fear to be poor, you just, you'll be poor. You fear that people will hate you, they will hate you. You fear to be rejected, you'll be rejected. That is how fear works. Bible says Abraham feared and then he said so that my life would not be taken so tell them you are my sister as soon as they entered Egypt the lady said I'm, they said who are you said, I'm his sister immediately the news got to feel that the fine girl have come his fear came to pass and Pharaoh said go and get her for me a, a fine girl just arrived in Egypt praise God get her for me <laughs> fresh fine girl and then say the truth is this a fine girl she's an elderly woman she was about 80 years old <laughs> 80 years or 70 years old as at the time they were but enough here first number 15 the bible says something about verse 15 the bible says and the princess also of pharaoh saw her and commended her before pharaoh and the woman was taken to pharaoh's house immediately they arrested at immigration when they were stamping her passport they just collected her from there and told her oh yeah enter Pharaoh's house. Why? The fear of Abraham attracted problem to him. Don't fear. Fear attracts what you fear to you. Stop fearing. I dealt with fear and I stood my ground. I remember the man came, gathered uh, Pastor Dennis and uh, Brother Philip and called all of them and was pumping fear into them. And I went there and I scattered all the meat. I said, you don't, all of them are not hearing you anymore. That chapter closes now. And I called my brother and said, if I see any one of you support the devil, I will treat you like a devil yourself. Now you are standing with me because this building must be made. If I never behave that way, this building will never have been made. We will never have made this progress. And I said, anybody who joins with the devil, I don't know, I think I commanded on sudden death or something to happen to the person. Everybody said became cool and correct. Or else the devil would have entered to take over this place. And I made that decree and I stood with three days fasting. Anybody who tried it would have gone that way. So we will know the wicked ones among and everybody complied. And we left the camp of the devil. And God began to help us. 
remember it was just number one we are number six or number seven you must know how to handle fear you cannot pamper fear and think fear will not deal with you you don't pamper fear you attack fear ferociously when you attack fear attack fear so that fear can fear <laughs> whenever you want to attack fear attack fear how attack fear in a fierce way so fear can be afraid of you if you pamper fear it will hammer you because in life whatever you pamper will hammer you hallelujah praise god they took her verse number 16 the bible says in verse number 16 and he entreated abraham well can you imagine he was giving abraham many things for her sake he had sheep oxen asses men servant maid servant she asses and camel pharaoh gathered many animals and gave abraham instead of his wife may your wife not be replaced in your life okay wait wait wait, wait. he gave him sheep oxen asses men servant men servant she asses and camels which of them look like a wife there they replace Sarah with animals eh? okay Moses are you seeing your Bible they took Sarah one person and they gave him many goods it will never be your portion imagine they take your wife away and they gather goods and then you, you are lying down and your wife is not around and the goods are doing meh meh and they are greeting you meh and whenever I see the goods you remember your wife it will never be your portion in Jesus name <laughs> and then you see the asses there <laughs> and you are wondering ah, is this my wife wait if Sarah was equal to an animal why didn't pharaoh use the animals why did he give animals to abraham and collected from the bible says in verse number 17 verse number 17 says and the lord plagued pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of sarah abraham's wife god baptized pharaoh with plagues punishment why because of what he did because he took that woman and then listen carefully. You know that it was not Pharaoh's fault. Pharaoh was deceived by Abraham. But God still went out to rescue. See, that's one of the things about attacking somebody who's, on whose life the hand of God is. Even when they do wrong, God will defend them. I'm telling you. <laughs> Who was wrong? Let us say the truth. Pharaoh or Abraham? Who was being punished? Pharaoh was plagued with great plagues. Not only him, him and his house with great plagues because of Sarah Abraham's wife. They became impotent. Some people became blind. Some people's hands were broken. Some people's leg broken. Some people's eyeball removed. Accidents were happening in Egypt anyhow. Plane crash everywhere. They were now wondering what is going on. What is going on? They traced the date when the problem started. They checked it was the date when a man called Abraham became a citizen of Egypt. They made up their mind, this guy is not part of us. Something must be wrong. And you know, Egyptians can consult devils. The devil said, Hey, you don't know who caused the problem. It is that guy called Abraham. Chase him out! And that woman in your house is not his is not his sister, it's his wife. You better chase them. That was how they gathered themselves together to chase them. Verse number 18. The Bible says in verse 18, And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she is your wife? Why did you behave like this? The next verse, the Bible says, Why seest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold your wife and take her and go thy way. Say, I would have slept with her almost, if not that God made me impotent and made me to have disease. Now when God baptized them with gonorrhea, and baptized them with syphilis and made a pharaoh impotent and problem <laughs> none of them could touch Sarah. god was defending abraham he said i would have taken her to be my wife if i wanted to take her into my room what is all this nonsense pharaoh got angry and said yeah, get out of my country get out they seized their visa they canceled their visa and they chased them out verse number 20 the bible says in verse number 20 and pharaoh commanded his men concerning him he told his immigration officers get this man out deport him out of egypt take him out 
and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had may they send you out of egypt oh my god am i in the rapture right today may they send you out of egypt from now this year you will no longer be a citizen of egypt in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray this night and god will answer us pray out your fear stop being afraid don't allow fear to rule you fear can destroy you fear can make you take decisions that will destroy you in a way you can never imagine rise to your feet it's time to pray we wanted to thank god for the 11th day of the fast go ahead thank him give him praise give him praise thank him thank him for the 11th day of the fast Whatever you are, go ahead, give him praise. Oh Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Blessed be your name, O God. We worship and adore you, O God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. I will not go away from your altar this year. I will not go away from your altar for the rest of my life. Whatever is trying to take me away from the altar, Father, take it out of my life. Take it out of my life. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Who is responsible enough to know that you should back up? Who is responsible here that knows that you should back up? Mareka taka braka doshe garuza. Mazeka daga braga doshe garusa handa. Masoka laga daga daga braga doshe garusa ta. I will not go away from the altar. I will not. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not go away from the altar. I will stay with the, at the altar. I will live by the altar. I will reside around the altar. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not go away from the altar like Abraham did. And began to have problems. Is a Goloka Dogodogra, Mareka Taka Braca Dosha Garusa Handa, Osika Laga Dagadagrava, Ekoloka Dogodoga Dogodogra, Mareka Taka Braca Dosha Garusa Handa, Oria Kalaga Dagadagrava, Eka Taka Braca Dosha Garusa, I will stay by the altar, Eka Taka Braca Dosha Garusa Handa, Oreka Laga Dagadagrava, Is a Goloka Dograva, Mareka Taka Braca Dosha Garusa, I will not go away from the altar, I will not. Go away from the altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Abraham went down to Egypt. You will pray from now henceforth. Whatever is taking me down to Egypt, remove it. I will not go down to Egypt. My journey to Egypt, I bought it now. Amen. I bought my journey to Egypt. Open your mouth and pray. Father, I bought my journey to Egypt. I bought it. I bought it. I will not go to Egypt. I will not go down to Egypt. I will not go down to Egypt. I bought my journey to Egypt. I bought it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bought I bought my journey to Egypt. I bought it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bought my journey to Egypt. I will not go down to Egypt in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Sekataka Braga, Father, remove me, O God, from that journey to Egypt in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The third prayer point you'll be clapping your hands as you pray it. You will decree this year, I will not experience famine. Amen. I will not have drought. I will not have scarcity. Amen. There will not be famine of anything in my life. Amen. On your mark, say, clap your hands and fire. Your there will not be famine. Pray very well. Clap your hands. There will not be famine in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, no famine in my life. No famine. I decree there will not be famine in my life. Clap your hands. Fire the prayer. There will not be famine in my life. No famine in the name of Jesus. No famine in the name of Jesus. 
let it be so, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now look at me. It was obvious that um, God did not go with him there. That was not the venue of God for him. So you are going to pray. Anywhere God will not go with me this year. Father, don't allow me to go there. I will not go down to Egypt. I mean, in Egypt, anything can happen. They can collect your wife. They can collect anything from you. But when you are where God stays, you say, nobody will collect anything from you. Your life is safe. You will declare and decree Anywhere God will not go with me, I will not go there this year. Amen. Fire prayer. Go ahead. Anywhere Jesus, God will not go with me, I will not go down there. I will not go there. The name of Jesus, Anywhere will God will not go with me, Father, prevent me from going there. Anywhere God will not go with me, Father, prevent me from going there. Prevent me, O God. I will not go there. Anywhere God will not go with me. I will never go there. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will never go where God will not go with me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. So shall it be. I want you to pray that every form of insecurity get out of my life. See, now listen. May God not allow you to go to where people will make you feel empty. There are people you meet, you just feel very empty. <laughs> I'm telling you. There's a place where you belong and a place you don't belong. As soon as he got there, I, he felt, hey, this wife is too fine for me. <laughs> he was thinking his wife is too fine for him. He became so insecure. I command the spirit of insecurity get out of my life. See, see, do you know some people they have money, but they are afraid of showing it. They can't wear good dress. There was a certain man that came here to work. They told me the man is very rich. But the man sleeps in a kiosk on the road. They showed me the kiosk. He rides a bicycle, but they have many trucks. <laughs> I somebody said it is Kikuyu. I said it's not Kikuyu because I know many Kikuyu that are blessed. And they live like people who are blessed. His own was a curse. He's a curse working on him. When you approach Egypt, you become insecure. You will pray against insecurity. Whatever makes me feel unfit to be blessed, 
Imagine God wants to give you a car. You are saying, no, no, God, give me a bicycle. If I will borrow, it's okay. We borrow. It's okay, it's okay. Chai, it's a demon. <laughs> Imagine God says, I want to take you to London. I say, no, no, Uganda. Uganda. <laughs> I'm okay with Uganda. Let them, let them take me to Uganda. Oh, babe. It's a, they said uh, Rwanda is final. Let us go to Rwanda or Somali. And it's why I thank you for Rwanda. When God is taking you to America, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Complex, inferiority complex. You will clap your hands and command us to get out of my life. You spirit that makes me not to feel fit for my blessings. So yeah, out on your mark, said. Fire prayer, fire prayer. Command it to get out of me. Any spirit that makes me, that makes me. Spirit of infinity complex. For, for, for blessing. Come out of my life. Out of my life. my life. In the mighty yes, get out of my life. I am fit for the blessings that God is giving to me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rabalaka, <laughs> Jesus. Get I out, you are a demonic spirit. I reject, I refuse you. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to get out of my life. Get out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. let him be so. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You want to chase out the spirit of fear? Fear is not good. The man that was on news. That his son stabbed 34 times. I know what killed him first of all was fear. Fear can kill anybody. Abraham was afraid. He said, They will kill me because of you. Tell I, tell I, say, You are my sister. The Egyptians are not also smart. How can an old man like that be claiming an old, another woman that is old like that is a sister? You should be smart enough to know. Mze. Hey, this is your wife now. <laughs> no, no. Look at Abraham was Abraham was close to 90 years old that time. He was an elder. Normally, somebody like that must have a wife, true or false. Are you looking at that? Oh God, you are deceiving us. How can you say this lady? Look at this mama is your sister. You say something must be wrong here. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will command spirit of fear. Get out of my life now. On your mark, set fire prayer. Go ahead. Get out of my life. Fear. Spirit of fear. Get, get out. out of my life in the name out of, of my Jesus. Life. Get, get out, out of my life. life. Get out of my life. Spirit I command of fear. you to get out I of my life. I command you to get out of my life. In the, in the name mighty of name of Jesus. Rabbis. Come out! Out of my life! Out of my life! I command you to get out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of fear. I chase you out of my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of fear. I command you to get out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of fear. I chase you out of my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit Rabalaka, 
in jesus name we pray amen now look at me all young people here fear makes people fail exam fear makes people to fail when you are afraid and you sit in the exam and your heart is busy you will fail whenever you are preaching exam enter it fearlessly that god will make me pass this one that's all boldness will pass but i fear you're not pretty If it's an interview, before they ask you a question, you're already shaking. Then you stand there. Because of fear, you forget what you want to say. Then, after the interview, you remember what you want to say. <laughs> That's what fear does. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. I wanted to pray. Lord, let my protection this year be non-negotiable. I must be protected this year. My family is protected this year. Our protection cannot be negotiated. On your mind, said fire prayer. In the name of Jesus. The protection Lord, of this place is non negotiable. My protection. Non negotiable in, in the name of Jesus. Negotiable. Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wanted to pray, Father, this year and forever. Let no agent of the devil put eyes on my blessing. Amen. That prayer is very serious prayer. The reason why many people don't like being blessed is because some evil eye will be put on their eyes. And then people will be looking for how to steal from them. How to take something from them. No party must put eye on my blessings. Clap your hands. Fire that prayer. In the name no of Jesus, Lord, no I declare the kingdom. No eye will go to must will, put will, eye in my blessings. In the mighty name of on this church, in the name no of agent Jesus, of the devil put their eyes on the blessings of this church. In the no mighty name of Jesus, put their eyes on my blessings. No agent of the devil do it. Barakatakabra kadosh 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 kadosh
no extortioner will attack me this year. Go ahead, fire the prayer. The I will not Jesus, be extorted this year. I will not be extorted this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no extortioner will extort from me this year. No extortioner will extort from this church. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against extortioners. I decree they will never prosper over us. Nobody will extort or attack us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be so. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You will pray. Father, anyone planning to extort us, plague them with grievous plagues. Amen. According to that verse. Plague them with what? Grievous plagues. Fire the prayer in the name of Jesus. Anyone planning to extort this church or extort any member or extort me or extort my children. Father, plague them with grievous plagues. Let grievous plagues come upon them immediately. Let them begin to swell up and burst. Let them start having different kind of diseases. That means that we are will up put them from the face of the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray. My protection will be a covenant by God. Amen. It's a covenant. It will not be it will not be dependent whether I am nice or not. It will be a covenant. Go ahead, fire prayer. My protection this year is a covenant. And for the rest of my life is a covenant. It will not be dependent on anything. It will be dependent on the blood of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, the protection of this church is a covenant. Is a covenant. Is a covenant. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray. Anyone that the enemy has sent against me, let them begin to pay compensation. All those who have attacked me, oppress me before now. Oh yeah, start paying with goats, with animals. Start compensating my life. Go ahead. Fire I command you to compensate. You are compensating in the name of Jesus. You are paying compensation. You will compensate in the name of Jesus Christ. You pay with compensation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You will say, Father, push Pharaoh to push me out of Egypt. I don't want to be in Egypt anymore. 
Mm -hmm. Any area of my life that is in Egypt, let them push me out now. On your mark, say, find the name of Jesus. Father, push me out of Egypt. Push me out of Egypt. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Laka Zakatara Laba 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 Laka
the good health God has promised us will be reactivated. We decree long life that God has promised us will be reactivated. Tonight's own, coupled with protection, Pharaoh will not extort us. Pharaoh will not collect our wives or our children or our husband in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who have extorted us before will pay with compensation in the name of Jesus Christ. The mother God will pray right now that we will not go away from the altar. All those who are far away from the other father, drag them close before famine comes. In the name of Jesus Christ. We will not go down to Egypt. Anything attracting us to Egypt, let it be destroyed as we take this communion now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing floor? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? In the blood, in the blood, in the soul, cleansing flood of the land. Are your garments, are your garments, spotless are the white Are you washed in the blood of the land? Are you washed, are you in the blood, in the blood, in the soul? There's in blood of the Lamb. Are your garments? Are your garments? But less are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? One more time. Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soul? There's in blood of the Lamb. Are your garments, are your garments, spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? For I have received of the Lord that which is delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, this too in remembrance of me. And after the same man also took the cup when he had served, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till they come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go. Give the minister the cup and begin to pray. Begin to pray. My protection is non-negotiable. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will not go down to Egypt. Pharaoh, you can't have me. I'm not coming. I will not be embarrassed by Pharaoh. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not leave the altar. I will not leave the altar. I will not leave the altar. I will not go away from the altar. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not go away from the altar. I will stay around the altar. I will not go down to Egypt. Whatever is attracting people to Egypt will not attract me. I'm not going. In the mighty name of Jesus, Pharaoh, you will not have me. Maleka taka braga doshe gadusaha. Oria kataka braga doshe gadusaha. Maleka dege 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 dege
Let it be so, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hear us, O oh God. From this communion service, our protection is non-negotiable. The way you still helped Abraham, even when he messed up, you still protect. Father, please, overlook our errors and protect us by a covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that you bless our stay around the altar. Let it prove, let it be proved that when we stay around the altar, we flourish more than when we stay away from the altar. None of us will enter into famine. Everyone who will obey and come close to the altar, Father, remember them. Let it be so, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll continue tomorrow waiting on the Lord. And by 6.30, we'll be in the presence of God again. Let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.